Hello artists and welcome back. I'm Thomas and welcome to the video that will reveal all of my artistic secrets. I'll be going through my oil painting process from start to finish today. But before I get started, I just wanted to announce that I am releasing a detailed course on YouTube for free, which I would call the Oil Painting Master Course. I'm currently scripting it and kind of working out what each episode is going to be but it will cover many of the aspects that I cover in this video, but in much more detail. So if you are interested in a course like that, subscribe to make sure you're notified when it does come out. So in this video, I'm going to go through the surface that I use to paint, how I prepare it, um, then a little bit into kind of, I guess, how I plan a painting. Then of course, the materials, the process, how I build up this particular painting that I'm gonna be showing in this video and uh, all the links to the materials will be in the description if you're interested and you can skip to any necessary point in the video which is relevant to you via the timestamps in the uh, video bar or the loading bar i don't know what you call it so first of all my surface i use 12 ounce cotton duck canvas and i both stretch and prime the canvas myself the primer i use is winsor and newton's galeria galleria I'm not sure how to pronounce it, um, primer, uh, white gesso primer. And I tend to not just use the primer straight from the pot. I tend to get another pot and do 50-50 with water. This gives kind of an, uh, it's easier to move the primer around like this. And I tend to build up three or four layers um, and then finish it off by sanding to have a nice smooth surface to paint on. Now that we have the surface, of course you need something to paint on that surface. And the way I plan my work, those who watch my channel will be very familiar with what I say about my work process. And that is I start a digital collage or a digital painting beforehand to create a painterly like dig digital image, which I then transfer onto the canvas. And by transfer, I mean literally paint everything on. Um, basically that's my, that's my reference image, the digital painting slash collage thing. For me, this is the easiest way that I can create an original image instead of just, I don't know, taking a photo or taking, or just copying another artist's work, for example. When it comes to my painting and original artworks, creating a digital image first is something that is quick for me. I can kind of go through lots of imagery very quickly without wasting any materials, which is why I choose the digital process beforehand for planning rather than drawings or more traditional means and testing before going on to a larger piece. I'm just straight digital. But everyone can have a different process because different paintings require different, I guess, techniques and processes. So um, say, for example, you're doing a large abstract painting with very thick paint. It's probably not necessary to build up I guess, uh, more diluted lighter layers underneath because the thick paint is going to cover all of that. So you might just be going straight on with thick paint. As for maybe building up a more realistic image in oil paint, then doing several layers might, I guess, bring you closer to your desired effects. So as for the initial steps when it comes to painting, um, smaller canvases, I tend to grid up the canvas first because I am very kind of adamant on getting an accurate drawing um, of the digital image onto the canvas. And the larger the canvas goes, I tend to actually project on larger canvases. Um, I think there's a weird attitude sometimes in the art community towards projecting images as if it's like cheating. But you know, if it's, if it's your design, your process, to get that initial image on by projecting on a larger canvas, I see it as just saving a load of time. Um, because I know I'm completely capable of, okay, I can grid up the, I can grid up the large canvas, I can do a, a drawing, I could not grid it up and then do it, and then you have to kind of adjust like, I don't know, 50 times. And because the, obviously the larger the canvas gets, the more difficult it is to kind of uh, I guess, um, draw on that larger canvas. But it's like once the initial drawing is done, anyways, you start to change and evolve the painting as is. So just that initial composition, I, I would say just project if you're using larger canvases. There are many artists out there who are very successful within the art scene who project their images onto larger canvases. So it's more about the design process than it is about whether you project or not. But say your ideas and your work process are involved more around spontaneous image or these accidental mistakes that we make, 
not projecting may be more suited to your work. So it's something you have to think about. Before I go on explaining now about the process of my painting or how I build up a painting, I'm going to go through the materials I use. The brushes I use are a mix of random brands from both the UK and China, both cheap and higher quality. Uh, the thing I just watch out for with brushes is avoid any of the bristles, basically. If you find the bristles falling out, you want to get rid of that brush. Also have a nice mix of flat and round brushes. I also use several palette knives for textures and cleaning paint. The paint I use is Winsor & Newton's Artist Quality Oil Paint alongside Winsor & Newton's Liquin as a medium. I've also used linseed oil but tend to use it just for maybe the final layer and details only. Uh, I use a glass panel for a palette, tissues to remove excess paint from the brushes and have solvent in jars if I need to clean or dilute my paint. I then use my computer or an iPad to display my reference as I paint. To begin a painting, I tend to have a mix of solvent and liquid um, with paint to get a kind of a loose first layer. Because my work usually contains abstract textures, I also use the palette knife at this stage to start building these textures. The liquid and diluted paint causes this first layer to dry quickly which means I can literally start the second layer usually the next day. Bear in mind as you paint, it's very important to keep an eye on the composition and drawing. If you're too relaxed regarding this, it's very easy to warp your image and change things such as the proportions or the perspective. A note regarding liquid, you probably want to stick to around 25% liquid and 75% paint if you want a protection from yellowing colors. Generally speaking, it's good to start painting from the background come forward. There's so-called good practice but I tend to switch it up depending on what I'm painting and what I feel on that day I guess. One thing I must emphasize though is keep your colors clean. Don't become lazy leaving paint on your brush and then going into a different color and you know having those tones mixed with other tones and your colors just end up becoming dirty. It's very important to continuously get excess paint off of your brush and ideally use brushes with similar tones and colors and not mix hot and cold together. Also pay attention to what your lightest and your darkest areas are. Sometimes I tend to leave the white of the canvas and put in shadows first so I've got kind of like my brightest white and the, the darkest shadow in the piece so I can kind of work out the mid-tones next to these lights and darks because color is very good at tricking you and sometimes you'll put a color down more of a mid-tone and then put it next to a dark or light color and you realize that Kind of those colors in the middle tend to be wrong because it's kind of been like a, a some kind of hallucination hallucination is probably the wrong word to use it's trickery colors colors will trick you as i said i will do uh, more detailed videos expanding on these points so i'm gonna have to think about colors and how i'm gonna explain that moving on to the second and third layers now i'm still using liquid for that quick drying time but I'm starting to use more paint so the colors become more vivid and I really start to try and refine the composition. Because of my abstract textures, sometimes I need to leave one area looking a bit messy while it dries and then fix it a day later. At this point, I start to look at the painting not just as a copy of a digital image, but an actual painting with its own rights, basically. Um, Sometimes when you have something like a digital image or a reference in a different medium, um, it, it, it doesn't always translate into a painting as well as you thought it might. So um, if you get better at planning, this, this problem becomes less. So this is something I find I've developed over the past few years. I'm better at planning paintings now, so I don't have to think so much when I'm using that reference. I find that the best paintings always come from the most well put together plans. So from this point onwards, you're simply building up details until you're happy with the final result. The reason I like to create my plan and have my reference is because I can use it as an indicator of when to stop painting. For the final layer, you also have the option of using slower drying mediums that add a shine to your surface, such as linseed oil or stand oil. These can also be used to create glazes, which is uh, a diluted kind of 
paint spread across certain areas to make delicate changes to the colour. Unlike liquin, stand oil and linseed oil have a much better resistance to yellowing, hence why you can use them for glazes. And this is the almost finished, I guess I'm still going to be adding some more details and build up some paint in other areas of the final piece, I guess that I've been showing the process of in this video. Um, what I do sometimes is leave a few days, have a look back at a painting, make a couple changes until I'm comfortable with the final result. This video was also one of my most commonly asked questions, so I feel like I was itching to put it out for you guys, provide some value hopefully, and uh, please do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, um, it goes a long way for the channel. And as I said, another reason to do so is because I will be releasing a lot of more detailed videos on each aspect of this kind of video, so less to say mediums, brushes, colours, uh, I guess more of a colour mixing kind of thing. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, as I said, it's still in the works. I've got the introductory episode kind of being written by right now. So as always, I wish you all the best for your artistic endeavours. And here is... Oh wait, wait, wait. You can DM me on Instagram or comment below if you have any further questions. I'm so bad at outro still, even after all this time. But yeah, here is, here is my awkward goodbye.